because it's pretty simple. It's not that complicated. The biggest star at ESPN has realized he's underpaid because he is. Hey, welcome to the MVP Podcast. My name is Dale, and today we're talking about Stephen A. Smith using ESPN to leave ESPN. Check it out. Hey, like have, it's just what you do. Have you seen Dress Down Stephen A. Smith? Like when he's got like yes. a hoodie on? It is so jarring. Seeing Stephen A. Smith without sleeves on was one of the <laughs> most jarring moments of my life. <laughs> Sleeveless A. Smith is not a look that I ever want to see again. Well, he's lost some weight and he's here for a fight. Like he wants to beat everybody in the new media age. He wants to take out everybody. Like look what he's doing. He's Man, he has conquered everything in this business and now is doing an infomercial on first take that builds his next business yeah. where he's just selling the yeah, next thing yeah. he's going to do. Yeah, I, 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 I wish I had been as wise to not be as emotional in that circumstance mm -hmm. where you realize everything is falling around you. Yeah. I wish I hadn't been, I wish I'd been more calculated that I could have decided, okay, you're going to do that to Chris Cody. Okay. All right. I'll wait 18 months and build it on your dime. But he and it, it took us that happening to us. Oh, don't put that picture up of me. <laughs> don't put the picture up of me at the Grand Prix. Oh, it was my more God. more embarrassing for the guy picking his wedgie. Let's be honest. <laughs> Valerie, Is that what he's doing? Valerie, yeah. why'd you let me I thought leave he's holding the, the door open. Way? Why did you? I, look, yeah. that, I didn't come in dressing differently after that, and that's the biggest shame I've ever had at how I've dressed. It was really hot out there. Valerie had to be thinking it that day. Do though. you know, it takes a lot to be the guy that isn't wearing a t-shirt of himself and be the embarrassing <laughs> dress guy. That guy's on Saturday Night Live behind y'all, right? <laughs> <laughs> I uh, I want to talk a little bit about Stephen A. We've done that segment a bit, but yeah, the dude is using ESPN as he grows his brand, as he becomes synonymous with that brand, but also trying to distance himself a little bit in building out the video uh, aspect of his next step. That's how you do it. We we did that some with audio, and I have my regrets on not using the video power and, and trying to be as uh, trying to have as much foresight as we did on digital video as we did on digital audio. He is presently being able to use the power of ESPN's platform to promote his own unique uh, YouTube page and side podcast, in which he can give you opinions on things that he can't necessarily give you on cable television, like BBL. Or natural. <laughs> now you know you all know I'm a bottom feeder. <laughs> Remember that line? <laughs> I'm yes. a bottom feeder. Wow. Yeah, it it allows us to see a different side of him while he is still the ten pole of their daytime uh, programming, and it is it, it is being so expertly done by him and his team that I'm so certain that he's not going to be exclusive to ESPN in the ways that he is for much longer because he is definitely plotting another avenue. Well, let me explain what's happening to you for those who don't understand because it's pretty simple. It's not that complicated. The biggest star at ESPN has realized he's underpaid because he is. got us mil a year. That contract right. was extended and nobody knows about it. It went to $9 million, not who's our thing. Really? Our thing, yes. We got So, obviously... This is correct. I believe that is the truth as well. You know, he's using that platform to gain all types of fans, gain all types of influence. I think he's trying to set himself up, you know, almost like a standalone, you know, commentator or announcer who can go anywhere and draw the same amount of fans, same about same amount of subscribers or influence, no matter what platform or channel or TV station he's on. And this makes sense because he's been fired by ESPN before. So, you know, he knows in the back of his head he can be fired again. And if he says the wrong thing, like before he said something about, you know, woman, I don't remember what it was, but in, I think in 2016 he said it, and he got the ax for that. So he knows in the back of his head that he can go. And even after the recent, you know, firings that happened a few months ago, he knows as well. He can, that's another sign to show that he can go also, right? And uh, another one is that he's not even the highest paid guy there anymore. So obviously, you pay your best, most valuable guys, you know, the highest amount of money, and he's not getting it. So it's obvious that when it's a, if it's a totem pole, he's not at the top of it. Okay, he's up there, but he's not at the top of it. And now they got Shannon Sharp on there, so you can kind of. 
if you wanted to, all right, get rid of Stephen A and put Shannon Sharp with some other guy. All right, and they can make it work. So at the end of the day, ESPN doesn't really need him. So I can understand why he's pushing so hard right now, right, with his podcast and with his um his channel on YouTube. All right, to to spread his influence wider, gain more fans, and um and even talk about more diverse topics, so that in the event. Or if he decides to get up and go from ESPN, right, he won't be left stranded. Now, many years ago, obviously, you weren't, you weren't able to do this because YouTube wasn't really popping like that. It didn't have the influence, did not have the global reach. It had a reach, but not the global reach that it has right now, where you know people are making a living, and it's, and even like celebrities can make a living on YouTube, but you know check six seven eight years like when he was fired before they didn't have that you know type of reach but now you got it and he can almost make the same amount of money all right on youtube with a podcast and maybe even selling merchandise and doing at you know what tons of different ad advertisements you know with DraftKings and all this type of stuff so at the end of the day you know in a few years maybe he might not even need espn maybe he might be able to make more money off of espn so this is a smart move a checkmate move you know when it comes to espn and i'm sure that they're aware of it but they know that they can't do anything about it so that's about it so until next time